Hello everybody and welcome, my name is Ursa Ryan and this should be hopefully an incredibly useful overview of Babylon. Now I am not ashamed to say when Babylon first came out I was half very excited and half utterly bewildered by the way that Babylon play compared to pretty much any other Civ within Civ 6. They are so different, it's mad. And without floating my own boat too much, I am very, very good at Civ 6. I frequently play on modes more difficult than Deity. I have over 3,000 hours. I would put myself as pretty good at this game. Babylon still confuses me, and I'm pretty convinced that I do not get the most out of Babylon when I play them. They are so different, and there are so many sort of little intricate tweaks and metas and strategies to how they play. I just don't believe that I'm getting the best out of them. So today what we're going to do is we're going to play a game through with Babylon and this is going to be my attempt to totally over explain them. Now the style of video that I normally put out is I play a series, it's quite edited and you get to see the sort of general highlights of what I'm doing and typically I play bigger maps and you can see a very very sped up version of the game that I play. So it might take me anything between 10 and 13 hours to play and you see maybe three of it. Well today we're going to be over explaining it a lot more so I'm going to be going deeply through my thought processes, the strategies I'm thinking about, the intricacies of how to play Babylon. Now I would say as well I would think that I've got Babylon fairly sorted but I am no expert. I'm going to be learning as we go along so fingers crossed this video will be useful for even people that believe they are good at Babylon because you'll see me making some mistakes, you'll see me making some things that you're not used to as well so maybe it'll be helpful who knows but I'm convinced that if you're watching this video and you've never really given deity go before or Babylon a go before or maybe even the combination of the two this should be very helpful we're gonna go through as much complexity and as much detail as we can now the map itself is a four player deity standard speed map we are playing on a mirror map which is basically just a four player map with six city states all of the starts are identical i'm sort of getting into the four player vibe before i really dive in to the apocalypse challenge game with the mayans that we've got going at the moment all the details are here but if you want to play along with me you can take the save file from discord copy paste onto your computer and you can play literally this exact map I also keep all my mod lists. I get asked all the time, Ursa Ryan, what user interface mods do you use? Because you seem to use a lot. I do use a lot. Too many to tell you every single time. Come to Discord. I keep a full list. Plus, it's a really good way of getting people onto Discord because I am a cheeky rapscallion. <laughs> Let's dive in. So why are Babylon so difficult? Well, it all stems from this second ability. This is the weird one. Eurekas provide all of the science for technologies 50% minus science per turn. So what happens is as you're going through the tech tree, if you do a Eureka, say for instance, I farm a resource or found a city on the coast or find a natural wonder, you immediately unlock the entire tech. Everything gets unlocked immediately. The penalty is that all science generation is 50% less. So basically Babylon are half as good as any other Civ in the game at tech. Generally any campus you put down, if you say for instance have the Etementanki, which just gives you science per tile. If you're working Alcazars, I guess is a good example of a tile that improves science. Trade routes with research agreements, anything that gives science, that is gonna be whopped at a minus 50% penalty. You are expected to basically micromanage the game in such an efficient and clever way that you get all of the boosts you can. Now, this basically means two things. Either you play Blabalon really badly, like I normally do, and you end up teching slower than everybody else, or you absolutely master it and you find yourself whizzing right down the tech tree before anybody else gets there. And the reason for that is because there is no era limit to this. For instance, one of the most common things you see with Babylon is the triple mine play. Now say I decide, right, I'm gonna stick a mine on this tile, let's stick a mine on this tile, and then, oh, what about on this tile as well? Bam, as soon as I put a mine down on that tile, I immediately have given myself the build three mines Eureka for apprenticeship. Now that is a medieval tech, but because in Babylon, it would unlock immediately. So it means that basically as soon as I get my first builder I can immediately start to put industrial zones down. It, it's nuts. It's nuts. And combined with that if I say 
had two industrial zones, then I put workshops in both of them, immediately I'd be off into the industrial era where you have the build to workshops boost of industrialization. That would immediately unlock and suddenly I can build myself coal power plants, factories, all of the good stuff. And even better, say for instance, I put a coal power plant into that industrial zone. Well, hey, look over here, we have refining now. And now we have coal power plants giving refining. We can put down oil wells and hey, say I put an oil well down on the oil that I've just found, huzzah. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. Plastics. Build an oil well and I can suddenly get plus one food to fishing boats as well as putting offshore oil rigs down. Babylon is full of these little intricate chained events and we're going to be talking about some of them as we go through. The second part about Babylon which is I think neglected a little bit compared to the crazy science game that we've just been speaking about is effectively every time you build a specialty district except the government plaza you get the lowest production cost building that can currently be constructed in that district for free. So, for instance, say I built my first campus, it would come equipped with a library because that is the first building that it can get in. It's the lowest production. It's all fine. Say, for instance, I built myself an industrial zone. The first one I built would come with a workshop. It's pretty simple, pretty simple. Uh, the same is true with commercial hubs. You get markets, harbors, you get lighthouses, encampments, you get, I believe, barracks are the ones that get popped down there because barracks cost 90 production and stables cost uh, 120. So barracks are the ones you get, basically. We've spoken about getting a library on the campus and you get a shrine on the holy site. That's not it, though. I believe the same is true of the aerodrome. It comes a little bit later into the game, but this pops up with a hangar for three. It also works for entertainment complexes. Those come with arenas as well as theater squares, getting amphitheaters. Water parks are another good example. These will pop up with Ferris wheel. Well, at least the first one. Remember, it's only the first one of every district that you build. Now, there are a few that you do not get that benefit from. So it then goes on to say that receive an envoy when any other district is constructed for the first time. So any other district, I believe, is all your green ones, like canals, uh, you've got neighborhoods down on the other tree, aqueducts, I think, I think preserves. Well, double check preserves, that's an interesting one. Government Plaza is a good example of one, a diplomatic quarter is a good example of one, basically anything else. So what Babylon is gonna do, is get a bunch of districts with buildings immediately put into them, as well as having a bunch of extra envoys to throw at city-states. Combine that with the Palgum, which is the Babylon version of the watermill, which is just insanely good. Basically, your city must be adjacent to a river, but you get extra housing, which already is really good. You get two production instead of one food and one production, and all freshwater tiles receive plus one food. That's really good when you're looking at a start and you put on the old freshwater thing and oh look all of these tiles are freshwater that's a lot of bonus production pal guns are very important buildings and basically you're going to use them to build very big cities babylon is all about huge huge cities got the extra housing to put people in you got the extra food to make them happy finally you have their unique unit which counts as a melee unit so like a warrior but it's only got 17 melee strength, except when it fights cavalry, so heavy and light cavalry, then you get plus 17, which is insane, but you also get three movement points and three sight. So basically, it's a scout, but a little bit more powerful, but it's also a melee unit, so it upgrades into swordsmen rather than into rangers and skirmishers, I believe it is. Yeah, skirmishers. So they don't upgrade into skirmishers, they upgrade into swordsman which honestly is a better progression tree because skirmishes just go all the way down to rangers and then i believe to spec ops and honestly they're rubbish the babylon have a unique play style i do enjoy it i'm just not very good at it so we're going to be practicing today the idea behind babylon is to get a little bit of a plan sorted with how you're going to work off them and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going for the pingala capital the growth city starts where we make our capital as big as possible and we're going to have a second city with magnus with provision in where all of the non great point generating buildings are going to be so pingala 
One of the best bits about Pangala, apart from the fact that he gives extra science and culture and extra culture and extra science from all the population, he's really, really good to have in a capital beginning of the game because he will generate lots and lots and lots of science for you. The best bit is this grants, plus 100% great people points generated per turn in the city. What we're going to be using is Babylon's ability to have a really big capital combined with its ability to feed it and then also to build districts that give three buildings in them. So I could have a capital, for instance, with a campus, with an industrial zone, with a commercial hub, ignore the placement, this is just me explaining the districts to you, each of which comes with a library, a workshop and a market, and also then Pingala in that city feeding plus 100% great people into it. It is a fantastic combination. The second city will be sat there with provision. It will also be the city that builds the government plaza, the diplomatic quarter, uh, maybe an industrial zone in order to boost uh, into industrialization. We'll kind of get to that in a little bit, but that'll be the city that kinks and, and, and hits out the settlers. Now, Eurekas are the most important thing for Babylon. Every Eureka you get gives you a free technology. The extra bit that people often neglect with Babylon is scientists. This one, for instance, gives you a Eureka for celestial navigation, mathematics, and engineering. That's three spare Eurekas. It's amazing. So you get that scientist and that's three techs immediately completed by Babylon. It's a huge, huge benefit for them. It doesn't matter that they have minus 50% science. You want to be getting as many great scientist points as possible, which is why I was talking about having Pingala with grants in and then a campus that runs off that. It's also why in my capital I tend not to play religion because even though you unlock religion before everyone else because all you've got to do is find a natural wonder and hey bingo there's your holy site, it's better that you focus on those districts in your capital that are going to be generating tons and tons of great people points. Ideally with Babylon you want to be earning as many great scientists as you can. If you can seize all of the classical era scientists, all of them, then you're off to a winning start that probably will give you momentum that'll take you through to the end of the game. Who knows whether that's really going to happen. Now, the problem with Babylon is that towards the end of the game, the Eurekas get a little bit more difficult. I mean, rocketry boost through a spy or a great scientist, that's not really anything. You start to get ones like kill a fighter, that's very difficult to do. All of the future era techs are just, get, you know, unlock with a spy or a great person, they're really difficult to do. And Babylon has minus 50% science. So whilst you can rush down the science tree and go to say rocket tree really quickly, the best thing about Babylon is domination victory because you can unlock combat units way quicker than other people. You can upgrade them way quicker than other people and then you can get out into the world and just have some fun. In fact, one of the first things that you should do as Babylon is just check who the great engineer is at the beginning of the game. Now, if you're lucky, you'll have a wonder building great engineer as your first one. We are not lucky today. We are getting city can build one more district than usual. That's quite useful, but not crazy useful, but it'll make my capital even bigger and either better. You also have a look at the scientists. If there's a couple of good scientists, you're looking for a scientist that gives you three Eurekas. And ideally ones that say anything in the classical and medieval era, because those are very flexible. What you can do is kind of sit on them whilst you unlock the Eurekas you know you're gonna get, like make a trade route, ha! That's easy to do. Build three specialty districts, easy to do. Build an iron mine, well, there may be no iron, so that could be a bit of a problem. So that's kind of step one, making sure you work out who the great engineers and who the scientists are. If there is a great engineer that gives you wonder building, then one of the first wonders you kind of want to keep in mind is the Oracle. Now the Oracle gives plus two great person points per districts that you build effectively in the city you put it in. You put that in your Pingala city and suddenly you're getting six scientist points per turn. It's amazing. It's really, really good. So if you've got an early game great engineer, that would be a very good use for them. Other ones you want to look at, mausoleum, well just you're going to be picking up a lot of engineers because you're going to get your industrial zones before other people and this makes basically every engineer worth twice as much so that's definitely worth keeping an eye on. Colosseum is always a good shout because the extra culture and amenities in all of your cities works well although Babylon you do kind of want to stick your cities out a little bit and have bigger cities so it's not the best one before you but it is still quite a good one. And then of course a great library rush can often be really good as well because you get relative boosts to all ancient and classical era technologies that gives you every single ancient and classical era tech immediately. So I'm going to stick them all down, all the ones that are kind of important for us. Oracle, 
really, really good one to consider. Mausoleum, yep, great library. Colosseum. Etementanki is a very good one as well. Now that thing basically just gives you more science in all of your tiles, as long as you've got lots of Martian floodplains, but it also gives production in the floodplains, so getting that into a capital can be a really, really good thing. In fact, actually, just looking at this, I can see floodplain over here, so that might be a start. Although, the extra science you get from that, not as useful for Babylon. And the Temple of Artemis. Now, the Temple of Artemis is always a good one. The extra amenities, the extra food, the extra housing makes your capital super, super big. If you can keep, pick it up, it, it is really, really good. Now, first of all, looking at starting location, look at all that tundra below us. It's all basically useless. What we want to stick to is as much fresh water as possible and you can see up to the north like if i move my warrior up here look at this already there's a ton of fresh water so while settling in place would probably be okay what i'm gonna do is move across the river to this plains hill tile now this will lose me a turn but that will give me a 2-2 starting location where i can immediately work the honey i've got two four yield tiles uh forest plains hills on uh, next to me i've got another one there I've also got a wheat resource that I can boost and put a farm on, which will give me irrigation and give me the palgum as quickly as possible. Yeah, for me. For me, this just has more fresh water in this direction. I'm pulling away from the tundra. I like this as a capital spot. Also, because your settler has a little bit more vision than your warrior, all units have two vision. Settlers have three. You can see already there is a tribal hut in that direction. Before I settle, I just move my warrior forward a little bit just to double check. Yeah, look at this. All of this land, pretty much all of my land in my second ring, some tiles on the third ring. This is all looking pretty good. And actually, this is all Etimantanki area. This would be brilliant. Anyway, we have the city of Babylon. <laughs> Not Babylon, Babylon. It's definitely the way that it was intended to be said. Sometimes you have to watch it. Look at that. It's working the one food, three production tile. That's great. But really, at the beginning of the game, you want to be hitting your housing limit as quickly as possible. There's no point not having the population. So working that honey is going to be incredibly useful. Now, I said, well, I mentioned before, Babylon get minus 50% science. So I've only got one per, uh, 1.2 coming per turn at the moment. That means 20 turns on pottery, animal husbandry, and mining. And these three techs, these are awful. These are absolutely awful. And the reason they're awful is because they have no Eureka. So you have to just grind them out. Now, working the honey is a good thing. I'm obviously going to want to put a farm down on the wheat as quickly as possible so that I can get irrigation to unlock the palgum. That's a really, really important thing that you want to focus on beginning of the game. But I think in order to get some mines down so that I can beeline towards getting an industrial zone down, basically industrial zones and campuses, those are the two tiles that I want to focus on beginning of the game. You always want to see if you can get a second city out as quickly as possible, but you want to kind of basically get your first unit out fairly quickly. Getting a scout to start with is good. Babylon, of course, have their own unique scout. It's a little bit more expensive to produce, 35 uh, production as uh, 30, but you will get the era score for doing it. And if we can get into a golden age beginning of the game, that'll help massively. And I'm just thinking actually, yeah, mining is gonna be the one that I want to start with. Now, hopefully I will find a warrior in that tribal village. I'm just actually thinking, do I get the scout first or do I get the builder first? I'm, I'm gonna get the scout first. It's good to explore the map as much as you can. Hopefully we'll get a builder in the tribal hut or at least in one tribal hut. There's a meteor shower. My word, that is some luck. That is some luck right there. That's gonna be a three heavy chariots, I believe you get at the beginning of the game because I haven't unlocked any heavy cavalry yet. And there's a free recon unit, so already we've got a scout that can go and pick it up. Perfect stuff. There is our Mar. Our Mar is a faith city-state, and you can actually see someone has met them already. That means that there is somewhere very, very close somebody exists. That is a little bit concerning. Oh well, we have a heavy chariot. That's a good thing. Because we've already got a scout and a heavy chariot, I'm actually going to put the builder through first. Now, the reason I want to put the builder through is to get that palgum sorted as quickly as possible. I really think that's got to be a good idea for us. There is a tribal hut. Now, uh, no, a barb encampment. Now, the reason barb encampments are important is uh, because you've got bronze working down here. Kill three barbarians. That unlocks you iron. You get iron sorted. That gives you an iron mine as well 
as the wheel mining a resource on both of those so that's a really important one to go and pick up another continent has just been found and look already there is a barbarian scout looking a little bit injured that is good good uh, attacking target practice for me there and we just got a free builder unit in a tribal hut so again that changes my early game build a little bit as well uh let's quickly go and pick up this Thousands that gives me irrigation love. so again because Not we just born. unlocked it immediately and the palgum so building a palgum will give me where is it construction build a watermill because that's basically the same thing so perfect right well we'll just stop building both of those for now and we will go immediately for the palgum this is such a good tile uh, this will basically give me an extra food on all of my freshwater tiles which is quite a few of them and the congo are the ones that we found to start with okay they're over here they have forward settled me pretty heavily writing has just been put down very quickly as well so the ottoman tanky i could start to build that now it would take me some time to do 37 turns 220 production the most production i could kick out would be 10 so that would be 22 turns that feels like too much it really does there I is a natural wonder so we've just astrology. got astrology as well this is where you've got to be a little bit careful with babylon already i've unlocked a bunch of texts astrology writing irrigation three very different things they're going to cause you to want to go in three very different paths on the tech tree you can start to get pulled in a lot of different directions very quickly the best thing i could advise is you have a plan from the start of the game and you stick to it because otherwise you will find yourself wanting to build everything and you will build nothing yerevan has just been found as well so that is another faith city state now we've picked up two of these which means we're going to get a pantheon fairly quickly i hope that is kublai of mongolia okay so we've got some fairly aggressive early game people not uncontrollably aggressive but pretty aggressive that was a new population babylon is already on 12 pop that now means that i'm working both of these forest hill tiles that is amazingly good stuff let's get urban planning because god king is not needed i already have the faith coming in per turn and discipline helps me to beat these early game barbs which are proving a little bit problematic not too problematic but they are a little bit annoying barb camp killed 30 gold gold is something you need to keep an eye on as babylon you will find yourself running out of it very very quickly because you have a lot of upgraded units that you can put in and very little money to actually buy them with it, it's really really tricky there's construction built because i now have my Build unique building mind. and you can see already up to lumber mill construction we can put lumber mills down oh, this is so good and the palgum you can see every single tile that i'm working now has plus one food it's absolutely crazy look at this two food three production tiles i haven't even done anything with them now you'll see that nobody's getting a great scientist just yet so i want to jump on those as quickly as i can let's get the campus let's do it as quickly as we can mining is complete next up animal husbandry i'm just thinking putting a lumber mill on one of these towers is going to give me even more production but for now let's get the first of the mines down it's not going to be a tile i work particularly quickly and then i will go and put the lumber mill down on this towel one more barb camp completed no oh, not quite i thought i would be able to do that never mind let's see if i can lure the scout onto the tile by putting my builder there sometimes they just can't help themselves it could it could help itself okay i was trying to trap it in actually that's a three kill to help me get bronze working but no so far not so good that's another barb camp completed we're well on the way to getting a golden age oh well we'll get the lumber mill down that boosts for me mass production i mean so that's insanely black. good but it's not what we're going for we're just basically getting three techs that is a renaissance era so you can actually see we just got a bunch of era score for doing that one world's first renaissance tech plus two era score lovely stuff now our capital already has 17 production 17 that's nuts so i'm gonna whip out a settler quickly i think it's probably gonna be the next best thing or actually should we get our unique unit let's just quickly do that finish the campus oh there's too much stuff to get this is what i mean about babylon you have to just focus on getting the stuff that you want to get now there are lots and lots of good pantheons that babylon would suit getting a free builder in the capital gives you city growth 
that gives you even higher population cities it, it is really really good city patron goddess helps you to get those great people out what i'm going to do is i'm going to focus on my scientist strat and go for divine spark this gives my campuses an extra great person point i think that works really well with babylon because we want to be focusing on getting that campus sorted as quickly as we can in fact i should look at this almost done already yeah there we go wrong place to run scout there is bronze working that has unlocked for us where the iron is there is an iron right next to my capital thank a goodness state workforce booster because my campus is now in place as well that's the campus there's the library i'm now going to be having three scientist points per turn that's a great scientist every 20 turns that is not quick enough so ideally what we want to be doing is getting pingala in as soon as we can that's our unique unit by the way well hey he's got three movement and a bit more sight we're going to use them to explore into the areas around where i am suleiman makes up the four okay perfect so it looks like we've got the congo to the right of us we've got mongolia to the top and then top right Will be arabia so as my builder goes around making extra mines so that i can get to industrialization i think i'm going to start to build the etaman tanky it's worth making sure that i can get myself an amazing capital before i start flooding out extra cities i just i i just believe with babylon having a strong capital it makes a world of difference it really does people are throwing delegations at me as well no which in. is brilliant we love to see that it's a bit of extra money for me oh some horses have plunked themselves right where i was going to build my district that is a little frustrating um okay well it means i'm just gonna have to end up putting the district on this tile instead never mind so this is a mine over a resource the wheel will get immediately boosted as well as iron working both of those are good and this is where we need to start being a little bit careful unfortunately because we're babylon we've now unlocked swordsman into the world i don't think i've done any other units it means that barbarians will start to spawn swordsmen now swordsmen are way tougher than any unit i've got so you need to have a little bit of a standing army with babylon like more so than usual because barbs on any map any map that barbs have like any hold over you as soon as you throw in babylon it just gets messy Hold there it is that crazy early game production with the heavens, them so that means that i built the etamen tanky plus two science and plus one production to all marsh tiles in my empire plus one science and plus one production in all floodplain tiles in the city now again that science doesn't do babylon a huge amount but what it does no do is put a little bit trust. more production into the city and suddenly look at this i've got myself a two food two production two gold and one science tile just on some generic floodplain it works an absolute treat so here is where babylon gets a little bit more complicated once you've done the first three texts you want to find yourself something to research that you're not going to end up getting the eureka for build a city on the coast there's nothing stopping me doing that i should do that build a quarry that's me being lazy kill a unit with a slinger maybe maybe but i'm thinking castles adopted government with six inherent policy slots now that is something that's linked to civics because that's going to be done the culture tree so there's no way i can rush that so actually doing that is a really good thing i think that involves going down archery killing unit with the slinger that's probably the most awkward thing to do right now because i don't actually own any slingers so what are you going to do the congo are desperate for me to give them iron and i think it's because they want to get their unique unit in so i'm going to do that if i could make friends with the congo that would be pretty good that gives me like an ally on my border i've got relationships with four at the moment i mean yeah i think okay, we should be good but with this tile i can put down what will be my third mine that gives me industrialization sorry apprenticeship no which unlocks industrial apprentice. zones but also gives my plus one production to all mine example, improvements it also nine. means men at arms are going to be around so we've got to be a little bit careful again of barbarians they will be very scary now very scary indeed let's get this industrial zone sorted i'd quite like to get that down as quickly as possible that would get me some engineering points in that's great oh, i love it when barbs do that he was so desperate to go and kill that city state he left his encampment open so yeah i'll just get the era score oh thank you so much congo will be friends for now they're the closest to me and until i commit myself to an early game war i'd rather be friends with them so having them on side that's perfect oh i just got masonry in a tribal hut as well as sailing okay that's pretty damn good i was going to put a city immediately over in this area to, in order to boost that one like quickly but 
now I'm thinking there's no need to rush a city on the coast like that, although actually there is some marsh that would be really good to work because of my Edmund Tanky. Yeah, not, not a huge amount of marsh around me that I can see, which is a little bit frustrating. Oh no, there's three over here. One, two, three, so maybe a city in that region is a good step. Hmm. Well, if I don't need it to be on the coast because I've got sailing already, why don't I go instead? Is that a plains hill? Yeah, that's a grassland hill. Ah, uh, okay, right. Well, maybe that, I mean, that is a good uh, tile. Maybe I'll go on this tile instead then. Give myself a little bit more workable land. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Matthew Wilkinson, Salty Tech, Davalex, Doughboy91, Truffa Askby, Paul Coffey, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Portland, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, and Nim for all of your support, as well as everybody else who engages with the video and helps me to defeat the algorithm. Thank you so much, see you next time!